what I was thinking about in terms of what we should try and capture in the uh, in the presentation is the is the dialogue between different aspects of the project. So there's um, there's the dialogue between you and me as sort of researchers working together for the first time. There's the dialogue between us and the students, as students and lecturers, and that dynamic. Then there's the relationship between us as an institution working with a partner, uh, well, with two partner organisations. So that becomes something where we have a, a product in our filmmaking to, to work with them in terms of their brief. I had a domestic violence incident. My daughter witnessed the event and my ex-partner had told her that she wasn't allowed to go into the bedroom, I was dead. I've been thinking about this recently, um, main, mainly since I watched Pose, because I think it's really interesting as filmmakers, we have a platform uh, to kind of help people, but it's also not our job to talk on the behalf of someone else. It's I think it's really important that we give someone else the platform to tell their own story. No, I think having like a few different videos would be a really good way forward because if like having the target audience as the victim and the harmer, if they're like, say they're using it to explain what um, the system is for people within autism, then they're going to, I don't know, like I think it could get confusing if one video shows both things if that makes sense. Um, maybe not, maybe we could do it in a different way, but I just think even like the film language that we use for someone with autism is gonna to need to be different than for someone without, so. It was really interesting how writing a letter, it, it like shows the inherent biases that you have. Um, Cause I mean, like it, it, it like actually writing it, it um, cause I just, you know, wrote what came to my mind and I didn't, I tried not to think about it too much. I thought, tried to like make it come naturally, but that, that did show me that, you know, I definitely have a bias. Yeah, it, it's, it's really good to kind of acknowledge, you know, some of the, the biases, the um, assumptions and stuff that uh, in our culture that we, we come with. And, and actually for this project in particular, I think that idea of, that the people that have spoken so far have responded to is it's it's very easy to empathize with a victim it's not easy to empathize with a harmer because it's very difficult to put yourself in that position something i found quite difficult was which i didn't do like the letter i wrote didn't do what i wanted it to but um uh was the situation where restorative justice could be reciprocated would be where both people know each other so they can somehow get the contact information of the harmer which seems to be something that is quite difficult because all the, quite a lot of the situations we've well I've read in the letters and that they discussed in the focus group were people 
that actually not the focus group but um i don't i don't know where her situation was when she didn't know the attacker um so she basically she couldn't get in contact with him or her i think she said it was him though but um she managed to get the restorative justice and to be feel satisfied with just her doing it herself so um and then there's this relationship between teaching and research and how um, those two elements feed each other. So we're thinking about things around ethics and um, that, that are, are more perhaps embedded in our research practice, but we're bringing those to the teaching. Um, there's the student perspective where they're, they're bringing their experiences and their, their knowledge as um, kind of practitioners filmmaking to the, to the table. Um, and that element of knowledge exchange, which, which is incredibly vital in terms of what we're giving them. We're giving them us our skills as filmmakers, but their, their brief is very much about us rethinking our practice as filmmakers and us having to think about the fact that, that our um, target audience is, is going to need a different set of film languages to the ones that, that we're used to. And I think, um, you know, talking to the students today, that idea that they, um, you know, all this stuff that feeds the filmmaking practice, um, which is very much embedded in the idea of a practice-based research around, so what, what are they talking about today? This, this idea about the biases they bring, about, um, uh, you, you know, the elements of themselves that they bring into the writing, which we have to unpack and then make decisions about the next step, which all of that kind of happens behind the scenes in order to inform what we then present to the client. So there's this, I, I think what would be useful for me in the paper is to look at that idea of these kind of dialogues that are happening in all of those different areas. And I know I've kind of probably said too much there, but you know, that, that idea of those kind of different elements of dialogue, which are absolutely essential to making the project work. And, and given the project's not gonna be finished by the time we um, come and give the paper, then what that does is it, it puts emphasis on, on those processes as opposed to the outcomes at this stage, which I think is probably quite a good idea. As part of our presentation, if we just have some kind of visual on what happened so far. Yeah, sure. Project. Okay. Okay. So um, through some of the other work we've been doing at the university, have have been working a bit with Barnet Mencap, and Barnet Mencap came together with Why Me Restorative Justice, um, and then approached us about a, a campaign that they're working on at the moment, which is about um, getting restorative justice processes, um, making those processes accessible to uh, individuals with learning disabilities and or autism. So I, I met with um, uh, colleagues from uh, Why Me Restorative Justice and talked through some of those processes and what, what it was that they were looking to do with Barnet Mencat. And we developed um, a brief at, at that stage um, and then it became clear that we would need some training to kind of uh, understand what the processes of restorative justice were ourselves um, also from you know in terms of training Barnet Mencap um, delivered um, hate crime awareness training and autism and learning uh, disability uh, training for uh, Vesna and myself and the students working on the project. Um, and what was really good about those uh, training opportunities was that uh, both restorative justice, uh, why me restorative justice and Barnet Mencap included in the, those training experiences, um, bringing along um, uh, people who'd been directly affected and um, and that was really kind of useful to have those kind of perspectives. It wasn't just about kind of trainers talking to filmmakers and leaving out the, the, the key stakeholders. Um, from there, we moved to the stage of 
doing a focus group. Uh, we had to do clear ethics approval for that. We're working with um, vulnerable adults. If I can just sort of move us to the to the focus group briefly. Um, you know, we had the training, we did the ethics approval, we had the easy read um, participant forms. Those processes fed into the group. It was really, really challenging. Uh, it wasn't, we didn't get direct answers. There was a lot of what I've kind of described as reading between the lines in terms of kind of understanding what some of those dynamics are in the community, the way um, some of those individuals are moving around on public transport or with other people with disabilities going to different groups and things and how, how the patterns um, of their activity leave them vulnerable to certain um, experiences. The debrief with the students was really, really useful to kind of unpack some of that. And um, you know, we're also going through the process of transcribing that stuff. So where we're, where we're at now is this, this writing stage. And um, because we're sort of dealing with the sort of dialogue uh, between in the restorative justice process of having somebody who um, is described as the harmer and the harmed, we, um, Vesna came up with this really good idea of, of trying to have an exchange of letters between the two, the harmed and the harmer, as a way of kickstarting ideas and processes. Um, uh, it links to the idea of restorative justice as a kind of exchange um, where there is a back and forth, uh, you know, between the harmer and the harmed. Ideally, although the process, as we've learned, can happen even without one side being present, without the harmer being present. Um, the way we decided to move forward for right, from writing the letters um, is uh, thinking more directly about the narrative and the structure of the film, because the letters won't necessarily stay in the final film we'd be doing, but they're very... Um, uh, informative because they bring in this exchange, as I mentioned. So some of some of the things that came out of that were that we were really recognizing our own bias. So um, you know, some really uh, interesting things came up for all of us really around gender bias. You know, lots of the lots of the harmers were men. You know, and we had to kind of then un unpack that in this sort of idea of stranger danger that that actually um, isn't really uh, uh, as common. It's much more about things where um, uh, people, the, the harmed would be coerced by people that they know or who are in their social sphere. Um, and we also had a bias around the kind of offences because we found it much easier to think about the harmer as being othered and being someone who might attack somebody getting off a bus or shouting you know, or engaging in hate speech. Um, and, and then that person becomes very, very one dimensional. So it was really good to unpack that with the students. How do we make sure that our approach isn't biased? Who are we making the film for and who are we making the film with? Um, and I think these two need to be sort of brought together. I don't, yeah. think, we, we can, I don't think we can make the film for people with learning disabilities and autism uh, without doing it with them. The question around the language then becomes the question on collaboration and how do we bring them into the process, working outside of hierarchies within film roles, for example. You know, how do we stay on track with the making of the film while making sure that we have everyone's voices included in the process, not just sort of thinking in um, thinking about the outcome. The next stage the students are working on uh, are, is around writing a synopsis or developing a story um, that, uh, that we can then in the next phase that we can start developing into um, into a script. So just going back to 
the, the kind of timeline of what we're doing. So we're, we're in the writing phase and we're about to, to kind of touch base with, with the client. And then as we're moving forward, then obviously we're going to go into a process of production. So to do the pre-production, shoot days, post-production, give us an opportunity to have touch points with the client so they can look at the rough cut and we can take feedback and do revisions. And then I think it's going to be hugely important for us when it comes to um, evaluating, going back to what we were saying earlier, Vesna, about this idea of, um, uh, you know, we're not going to cover everything. There's no, there's no way that we can cover all the different scenarios and make sure that we have hit um, everything in terms of it being accessible, making sure that... Um, that everything is 100% clear and understood because that's a sort of impossible mission to kind of set ourselves under any circumstances. Whilst there is a precise brief of, um, you know, of, of creating a film, I think that there is another great potential of this project is to follow the afterlife uh, of, the, of the film and also the impact it creates. So whilst we won't be engaged in the project in the same way because the filmmaking process will have ended, we are planning to stay in touch with, uh, with the community partners. And it, this is potentially an ongoing research in terms of measuring impact. And you know, it, it could well be that, that the biggest part of this as an output is how we write this up to be useful for other researchers and other filmmakers to kind of take this forward.